environment is one of the most important, unique contributions of India to the whole world. <coughs> Many of the major religions, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, Judaism, they all accept the universality of this law of karma. A great philosopher, some of you who like reading must have heard of Paul Brunton. He said that the law of karma is a perfectly scientific law. And that is why you find more and more people in the world accepting this, this doctrine of karma as the most meaningful, the most logical explanation of all the disparity and inequality that we experience and witness <coughs> in our lives. This law of karma can be compared to the law of gravity in physical terms. Now if a person does not accept the law of gravity, I don't believe in that law, does it matter? It's not going to change things. The law of gravity is an irrefutable law of life. In the same way, if a person says, I do not believe in the law of karma, I do not accept it. It's not a question of accepting or believing because you're still going to be ruled by it. You cannot avoid it. You cannot escape it. You all know that the law of karma is the law of cause and effect. Whatever actions we perform have a reaction. In Christianity, this concept has been referred to as what you sow, you shall reap. Jo karenge, so karenge. Thus, according to this law of karma, whatever happens in our life, we ourselves are responsible for it. You are the architect of your present situation, your past and future. So karma means that you are responsible. You determine the circumstances of your life. To be born a cripple, with langra paga hua hai? Or to be born an athlete? To be born a beggar, bikhari ke ghar pe paga hua? Ya raja bana? To be born a king? Is the sum total of your own actions? So, to cry against some apparent injustice in your life, we are always doing that, grumbling and complaining, why has this happened to me, I don't deserve this faith. So to cry out against any injustice in your life is ignorance of this law of karma. The Prashna Upanishad Mantra 3 7 says, Punyena Punya Loka Mayati Papena Papu Bhapya Meva Manushya Loka. The Mahabharata Puran says, Avasya Meva Bhoktavyam Kritam Karma Shubha Shubha. Aapko Fal Bhogna Padega. Ache Karma Ka. Acha. 
फल मिलेगा the cat the karmic reaction will be according to what you do good actions good result bad actions bad results so you are responsible ab yahan par ek prashn upasthit hota hai you have a question what is that question we hear that ईश्वर की इच्छा के बिना एक पत्ता भी नहीं मिलता नॉट अ लीव स्टर विदाउट द विल ऑफ गॉड बाइबल सेज दैट क्रिश्चियनिटी एंड देयर आर मेनी रिलीजन सपोर्टिंग दिस व्यू वही होता है जो मंजूर है खुदा होता व्हाट एवर गॉड विल्स इट कम्स टू बी Listen to the Gita, 18th chapter, 61st verse. Brahman sarvabhuta ni yantra rudhani maaya. 18th chapter, 61st verse says that God moves everybody like a yantra. He's a machine. We are like a machine in His hands, and He moves us. तुलसीदासी द ग्रेट सेंट तुलसीदास सेस द रामायण और प्रेरक रघुवंश विभूषण सवै न चावत राम गोसाई ही मेक्स अस डांस वी आर लाइक पपेट्स इन हिज हैंड्स दिस इज व्हाट द रामायण इज सेइंग सो वी हैव नॉट वन बट many mantras many verses many quotes telling us that it is god who makes us to we are like this whatever actions we perform it is his doing so whether we do good that's his doing and the bad that's what he like even that he does what would you say we know that what you sow you reap you hear that on one side and the other side you hear not a leaf stirred without the will of god what is the truth kya bhagwan karta hai ki hum karte hain let us uh, find out With a bit of brainstorming, based upon simple logic, are we the doers of action, or is there some God up there who makes us dance like puppets? He is the doer. We don't do anything. Let's take point number one. Suppose you say yes. I strongly believe. हम लोग कुछ नहीं करते हैं वही करता है. God is the doer, right? Who is God? What do we define God as? We may not know a lot of the scriptures, but at least we know one thing. God is a personality who is all powerful. भगवान सर्वशक्तिमान है. And He is all pervading. He is all knowing. These are a few things everybody knows. We may accept it or not, believe in it or not, but we know theoretically he is all powerful. He is all pervading. He is all knowing. Now we all can experience that in our lives there is a lot of wrong things going on. Suppose uh, you have a car and a driver. Not many people have drivers here, but suppose in India people are drivers. Now that driver does not know how to drive. So गाड़ी चलाना ठीक से आता नहीं. India में कभी कभी अभी पता नहीं. ऐसे ही लाइसेंस मिल जाता. पैसा दे दो, लाइसेंस मिल गया. तो उसको ठीक से ड्राइविंग नहीं आती और शराब पीए हैं. He's drunk. 
Now what's the result going to be? Every possibility of an accident, isn't it? The owner of the car is sitting behind and he realizes that the this driver is drunk and there can be an accident. He tells him, just go, I'm going to drive. He's a good driver. So he sits on the seat, gets the driver over the back. Now, now there's a possibility that there won't be an accident because he's a good driver and he's not drunk. Now suppose God were to be the driver of our life car. Then there could not be any accident because he's all powerful, he's all knowing. No possibility of anything wrong going in our lives, anything bad happening in our lives because he is the driver. But we all know that we have plenty of accidents when it comes to wrong actions in our life, wrong decisions in our life. बहुत कुछ गड़बड़ हमारे जीवन में हो रहा है तो अगर भगवान करता होता तो कोई गलत काम हमसे कभी न होता ठीक है नंबर दो What do you hear about God? He's impartial. He's equal to all. See what the Gita says. Samoham sarva bhuteshu navet dveshu stinapriyam. 9th chapter 29th verse. No one is an enemy to me or a friend. Na mera koi dushman hai, na mera koi dost hai. I'm equal to all, right? Now when God is equal to all, our experience tells us that some people in this world did good things, they performed the right actions and they were forever liberated from all the suffering in the world. You hear of Tukaram, Tulsidas, Meera, Nanak Dev and so many of these saints, they performed good and they got out of this vicious circle and here we are still moaning and groaning and suffering everybody is going through some sort of suffering and mental stress universal now if God is the doer of every action why has he been so unfair kisi se achha achha karwate hain aur kisi se pura kaam karate hain ये कैसा भगवान है? We all believe that you may do anything wrong to me here in this world, but I know that it's going to be justice there. हम लोग कहते हैं ना गरीबी कहता है, हमारा तुम्हारा फैसला उधर होगा, उसको विश्वास है। भगवान गलत नहीं करेगा। तो फिर ये क्या बात हुई? कर्म का करता वो है, एक से अच्छा कराता है, एक से बुरा। इसका मतलब भगवान नहीं करता। अगर वो करता तो सबसे अच्छा अच्छा कराता सब लोग एक सा काम करते राइट दैट्स द सेकंड पॉइंट लेट्स कम टू द थर्ड पॉइंट वी वर जस्ट डिस्कसिंग द लॉ ऑफ कर्मा व्हाट यू सो यू रीड दैट मींस व्हाटएवर अ पर्सन डज यू हैव टू सफर द कंसीक्वेंस ऑफ योर एक्शन राइट Nobody else will suffer for that. You have to, right? Now, if God is the doer of our every action, to falko bhi usko bhogna chahiye na? He should go through the consequences of the actions. He should suffer them. Now, well, he's all powerful. He can pardon himself. He's independent. Galat kaam ki aapne ko maaf kar diya. We have no objection. Do what you want. So long as you don't make us suffer. You make us do. Like whether God does it himself or he makes us do. It's the same thing. Hum se karm karata hai. Bura karm, achcha karm, jo bhi hai. To ho karata hai. Aur hum ko dukh 
भोगना पड़ता है दिस इज नॉट फेयर एट ऑल अगर भोग करता है तो दुख भी उसको भोगना चाहिए अगर एक भाई खूब पेट भर के मिठाई खाता जा रहा है खाता जा रहा है दूसरे भाई ने नहीं खाई अरे फ्री में है पार्टी में खूब खा लो खूब खा लो तो जिसने खूब मिठाई खाई तो उल्टी तो वही करेगा ना अगर रमेश ने मिठाई खाई है पेट भर के और खा लिया तो उल्टी कौन करेगा दिनेश नहीं रमेश ही करेगा क्योंकि उसी ने खाया सो वन ओवर ईटन दैट पर्सन विल सफर द कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस व्हाई शुड अनदर पर्सन हु हैजन बीन हु हैज ओवर ईटन सफर एक खाए दूसरा उल्टी करे ऐसा दुनिया में नहीं होता <coughs> देखिए अगर एक देश की सेना को कहा गया कि दुश्मन से लड़ाई करनी है गो एंड फाइट विद द एनिमी नाउ इफ इन द वॉर वन साइड ऑफ द कंट्री विंस एंड सम ऑफ द पीपल किल से फोर कर्नल्स ए ब्रिगेडियर्स इन सबको मार डाला जान से मार दिया तो क्या उनको फांसी होगी तुमने आदमी को मारा कर्नल को मारा ब्रिगेडियर को तुमने मारा तुमने मारा था हां जी मैंने मारा तो तुमको फांसी नहीं 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 नह, नह, उसको फांसी नहीं होगी तो क्या होगा उसको मेडल मिलेगा वन बिकॉज ही वॉज जस्ट फॉलोइंग द इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट he was asked to fight the war and in that war he was brave enough to kill all these people on the enemy side so he is going to be rewarded with medals in the same way if god is making us do whatever we are doing good or bad then he should be rewarding us because we are following his instructions we are not doing anything jaisa wo karata hai waise hum karte hain उन्होंने आपको कहा या लेक्चर में आ जाओ आप आ गए अब वो कहेंगे कल मत ऐसा नहीं तो आप नहीं आए अरे उसकी इच्छा के बिना पता भी नहीं था आपको पता नहीं थी दीजिए आप तो ऐसे बोले तो अगर वो कराता है तो हमको तो उसको इनाम देना चाहिए यू हैव डन जस्ट इज मे बी टू आर You you murder murder. somebody? Yes, yes. Thank I I may be murder. Did you steal something? I may be do it. That doesn't happen, does it? So, whosoever sows, that person has to reap. जो करेगा सो करेगा तो करता भगवान है घर पे हम वो तो हमको भी अपने लाइफ में मन वो करते हैं कितना दुखी है मनुष्य अपने शरीर के रोग से दुखी है अपने परिवार में आज ये मुसीबत आ गई आज ये भाग गया आज लड़की की शादी ये मुसीबत लोगों के दिमाग में मैं तो घर घर जाकर देखती हूँ हर व्यक्ति दुखी है नानक दुखी आज सब संसार तो कैसा भगवान है ये खुद करे दुखी हम हो चलिए आगे बढ़ते हैं पॉइंट नंबर फोर अगर भगवान कर्म का करता है ही टूअर ऑफ ऑल एक्शन रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन इन द स्क्रिप्चर यू नो दैट इन देदर्स वी हैव एटी थाउजेंड मंत्र टेलिंग अस एग्जैक्टली वॉट वी शुड बी डूइंग एंड वॉट वी शुड नॉट बी डूइंग इसको कहते हैं विधि निषेध प्रोहिबिशन एंड इंजंक्शन और यू कुछ से डूज एंड द डू नॉट्स ये सारा लिखा है इतने डिटेल में आप लोग तो कुछ जानते भी नहीं हो उठते बैठते हम लोग वेदों के खिलाफ कर्म कर रहे हैं कुछ नहीं जानते हम लोग इसी तरह इफ यू टेक अप द कुरान देर आर रूल्स यू टेक अप द ओल्ड टेस्टमेंट 
Most of the Old Testament is just rules and regulations, do's and do nots. So, if Bhagavan ne karta hai, then what is the point of all these rules and regulations? He shouldn't have bothered to waste his time. He should have said, "Ay, manushya, tum log bechikar rao. You don't need to worry about anything. All these do's and do nots. I am the doer of your every action." So why all these elaborate rules and regulations? You have to listen to the ten commandments. Why do commandments? As a as a do, as a as a not do, you will get punished. And who will get punished? You will get punished. Let's go to the last point. This is all logic I am telling you. We hear of uh, different levels of, you could say, prisons. आप लोग सुनते हैं ना कोई नरक है, है ना कोई स्वर्ग है है कि नहीं है उसकी बात छोड़ो इसी संसार में आप देखते हैं ना in this world कोई मच्छर बना है यहाँ पे भी थोड़े-थोड़े मच्छर हैं ऐसे नहीं है नहीं है लेकिन मच्छर है कोई और कोई गधा बना है कोई कुत्ता बना हुआ है और आप और हम मनुष्य बने हैं एक बार ह्यूमन फॉर्म एंड आल्सो सम पीपल हैव सेलेस्टियल फॉर्म तो भगवान ने ऐसा क्यों किया किसी को गधा बना दिया किसी को कुत्ता बना है किसी को पक्षी बना दिया और किसी को मनुष्य बनाया तो ये सब अलग अलग जेल कह सकते हो क्योंकि ये भी एक जेल शरीर में कुछ दिन के लिए बंधन है तो अलग अलग जेल भगवान ने क्यों बनाया जब वही कर्म का करता है तो हमारे संसार में भी जेल है ना तो ये संसार में भी जेल किसके लिए बने Those who are criminals, they do wrong, they are sent to a prison, right? In every country, not only today, even 5,000 years back, there were criminals. And whenever anybody does wrong, they are sent to a prison. What about those countries that believe in God, God-fearing countries? Like India, for instance, तो वो लोग अगर कहते हैं भगवान ही करता है, तो फिर किसी को दंड क्यों देते हो? अगर if somebody is stealing something or murdering somebody, it's not there, it's gone. So in God-fearing countries like India, there should not have been any prisons because God is the doer of every action. But we have prisons in India and we have prisons in communist countries. Those who believe there's no God, you are responsible for your actions. Everywhere there are prison houses for those who do wrong in the world as well. So, Bhagavan agar karta, toh phir aisa kya kiya usne ki kisi ko dukh de ra hai ya narak de ra hai. Bhoat se loog kehte hai, isi sansar mein narak hai, isi sansar mein. चलो मान लिया लेकिन है तो तो किसी को तो क्यों दे रहे हो और किसी को सुखी किया तो विद ऑल दिस आर्गुमेंट्स इट इज एविडेंट दैट गॉड इज नॉट द डूअर ऑफ आर एक्शंस वी आर सेल्स आर द डूअर्स नाली गीता में श्री कृष्ण कहते हैं न कर्तृत्वम न कर्माणी लोकस्य श्रीजते प्रभु नारते कस्य चित्पापम न चाइना सुखितम विभु फिफ्थ चैप्टर फोर्टीन वर्स एंड फिफ्टीन वर्स आई डू नॉट इंटरफेयर विद ह्यूमन फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्शन एट ऑल आई डू नथिंग व्हाट एवर यू डू गुड और बैड आई डू नॉट इंटरफेयर There you go. 
But what about all those verses and those mantras you quoted from the scriptures? I said, Brahmayat Sarva Bhutani Yantra Bhutani Mahaya Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam Ritesh Junateshta, the 18th chapter, 61st verse. Guru Granth Sahib mein hai na? Nako Murak Nako Syana Varate Sab Kichu Tera Bhang. Nobody is a fool or a wise person. Whatever you make a person, that's what he is. Yani, what do you get on that? I'll quote to you a mantra which says something so shocking, you will really find it surprising. Kaushit ki Upanishad, mantra 3 9 says, Esha heva sadhu karma karayati. And Esha heva sadhu karma karayati. Bhagavan Jisko Upar Bhejna Chata. Upar means to get out of this cycle of birth and death. Apne Ghar Bhejna Chata. He wants to take that person to the divine abode. To kya usse acha acha karata. A jisko dukh dena chata hai, niche bhejna chata hai. To usse bura karata hai. Utahi. Asa Bhagavan ho sakta hai. Ki jisse and he is partial. Jisko udhar de diya na, usse acha acha karaya. A jisko niche narak bhejna hai, to usse bura karaya. Ye kaushit ki upnishat mein likha hai. What are you going to decide? Who is the doer? Is it God or is it us? The scriptures are telling you both these things. And that's why, listen to me very carefully. Anantam param gambhiram durvikahyam samudra. Bhagavad Gita. Verse number 11, 21, 36 says that these scriptures contain very profound truths. Therefore, Anadya Vidya Yuktasya Pusha Shvatma Vedanam Svatona Sambhavadanyas. 11th canto, 22nd chapter, 10th verse says, Don't you make the mistake of trying to study these scriptures on your own. You will only reap doubts and confusions. Aapka dimaag khara ho jai. Shastra padke apne aap tumko gyan nahi hoga. You may spend millions of lives because the truths are so profound and there are so many contradictions. I've just given you one of them. And quote it from the scriptures. How will you decide what is the actuality? Is God the doer of our actions? Or are we responsible for our actions? You know what you're going to do and what we do all the time? We are opportunists. Jab man me aata hai, ye mere kiya hai. This is all my hard work. You know, we often say that. Aap sabhi log is England mein aai the. To bhoat se log kehate hain, Africa se aai the. I came with one pound in my pocket. Sab ki kahaniya mein sunti ho. Koi kuch kehata hai, koi kuch kehata hai. Dekho, aaj, aaj humare paas Mercedes car hai, humare paas teen makan hai. All this is my hard work, my brains. Aar, jab, jab koi hum se achha kaam nahi hota, we want to escape from doing something. Like I said, you come to the lecture today and tomorrow if you don't want to come, you'll say it's his wish. If he decides that I shouldn't come, I can come. That's how we are. Matlabi hai, opportunists. When it suits us, it's me, 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 me. And when it suits us, it's him. And of course he's not going to come and say, look, what the hell, why are you blaming me? It was not me, it was you. He's not going to come and say that, so it suits us. 
So this kind of philosophy is not going to help you in life. I'm sorry to tell you that. And we not only will we commit an offense, but we will never get out of this bondage. We are bound, we know that. We are suffering, we know that. So if you want to get out of it, you have to know the truth. So now, I'm going to explain the fact to you. If you listen carefully, then I can challenge you that your confusion regarding this point will be cleared forever. Of course, if somebody wants to be confused, deliberately confused, nobody can help you. But what you listen today will definitely give you the understanding about why the scriptures on the one hand say that he is the one you cannot move without his doing and why is it said that you are responsible. In the Vedanta, Brahma Sutra, Sutra number 2341 says, Krita Prayatno Pekshastu Vihita Pratishiddha Vayatya Divya. God gives each and every one the power to do. Bhagavan Amko Karma Karne ki. Shakti Deta Hai Aur Karma Hum Khud Karte Hai We perform actions according to our own desires but with the power given by God Agar Bhagavan Hum Ko Karma Karne Ki Shakti Na Deta To Hum Kuch Nahi Kar Sakte सरा एक दो एग्जांपल से समझ लीजिए आप लोग बीज देखें यू हैव सीन सीड्स यू हैव मिलियंस ऑफ सीड्स राइट डिफरेंट ट्रीज डिफरेंट प्लांट्स फ्लावर्स ग्रेन्स हर्ब्स ऑल डिफरेंट सॉर्ट्स ऑफ सीड्स दैट आर देयर दे प्रोड्यूस डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ ट्रीज प्लांट्स व्हाटेवर you have the big banyan tree and then you also have those miniature fashionable Chinese plants. They never grow bigger than that. So all these uh, different kinds of seeds, you probably have gardens as well and you grow whatever you feel like. Some people use their gardens to grow vegetables. Some people use their gardens for flowers, whatever they may be using and some people have fruits there. Now, these seeds have got within themselves the different kinds of whatever plants or trees that you see is due to what is present in that seed itself. However, will a seed grow into a plant? Will a seed germinate on its own? No. You go to the supermarkets, there's plenty of uh, seeds being sold there in packets, right? Do these seeds become plants on their own? Can you reach pear ban jate apne aap? No. Are ye packet dus dus saal bhi pade rahe wahan pe, lekin usme se pear nahi banega. You have sacks containing rice and wheat. Those seeds may lie in the sacks for years together. Lekin usme se koi pear nahi banega. Kyo? Kyunki jab tak paani nahi milega. Tab tak wo pear nahi ban sakta. You need water. Water is necessary. Just as you can see for yourself, you say soil is also necessary. Granted, but main thing is water. Aap log apne ghar mein moo bhi ugaate ho na, kya karte ho? Kali paani mein daate ho, koi mitti daate ho kya? Nahi. Chana, moo, 
मुंह खाते हैं ना लोग तो कैसे पानी है ना पानी डाला तब दैट सीड्स प्रैक्टिकली जर्मिनेटेड सो वाटर इज नेसेसरी एंड देन यू सी इन फॉरेस्ट हु गोस टू प्लांट दोस ट्रीज देयर यू नो द सीड्स फॉल इनटू द ऑन टू द ग्राउंड एंड देन देयर इज वाटर देयर एंड यू फाइंड ट्रीज डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ ट्रीज कमिंग अप बट The water is there equally. पानी बरसा आपके बगीचे पर ठीक है तो पानी तो पूरे बगीचे में बरसा लेकिन जैसा जैसा बीज था वहां वैसा वैसा पेड़ निकला And sometimes you can even get weeds. You don't want them, but the weeds come up, don't they? So is it the fault of the water that you got those horrible weeds in your garden? No. The water was there, the rain was there equally there in the garden, but according to the seeds that were present, the respective plant or whatever it may have been came out. But water is indispensable. Let's take another example. You all have electricity in your houses. It's become such an indispensable part of our lives. You can never imagine what it must have been maybe a couple of hundred years ago when there was no electricity. Candlelight or whatever people must have used. Life was so simple. Now electricity, you can do anything you want with it. You can wash your clothes. You can iron your clothes. You can wash your dishes. You can go up escalator. You can come down. You can dry your hair. You can even shave. There's so many things that you do with electricity today, right? So electricity comes from the main power house to your house for your benefit, and according to your need, you make use of this electricity. However, if a person wants to die, even electricity can help that person to do that. How can that electricity do it? Well, all you have to do is uh, you can't see any wiring here because these days the houses have got all concealed wiring. But in olden times, probably some old houses in England will still have it. You can see the wires. And suppose there is a live wire, it's kind of exposed wire, and somebody holds onto it deliberately or by mistake. A live wire. What's going to happen? The person is going to experience a terrible shock. Now the person who experiences that shock through that live wire, he complains and blames the main power house. If the main power house that not provided electricity to my house this would not have happened to me but who asked you to do that nobody asked you to pull that wire aapko kisne kaha ki nangi taar pakad lo marne ka kaam kar rahe ho aur kehte ho kyu mara main to isliye bijli ka bijli ki galti hai kya are bijli to aapke matlab ke liye aapke laab ke liye di gayi आपको मरने के लिए किसी ने नहीं कहा तो आप बिजली को दोष नहीं दे सकते ऐसे ही देखिए सारी दुनिया में आप लोग नदियां देखते हैं रिवर्स एवरी कंट्री ऑलमोस्ट एंड पीपल यूज द वॉटर फ्रॉम दिस रिवर्स फॉर डिफरेंट पर्पसेस इन प्लेसेस लाइक इंडिया पीपल इवन ड्रिंक द वॉटर एंड इवन यू प्रॉब्लम जो है गंगा जल बहुत से लोग इंग्लैंड भी लेके आते हैं घर की शुद्धि करते हैं अरे नदी में पानी है पीते भी हैं और उसमें नहाते भी हैं और कपड़े भी धोते हैं बहुत से लोग इट्स यूज फॉर इरिगेशन पर्पसेस इट्स यूज फॉर हार्नेसिंग इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एज वेल एंड इफ समबडी इज रियली डिप्रेस्ड एंड वांट्स टू पुट एन एंड टू हिज और हर लाइफ एंड सपोज द पर्सन डज नॉट हैव टू स्विम द इजीएस्ट वे टू डाई इज जंप इनटू द रिवर बस और या किसी और को आपको मारना है और पता है तैरना नहीं जानता धक्का दे दो 
पानी में गया बेचारा डूब गया मर गया तो इसमें नदी का कोई दोष है क्या इज द रिवर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दैट For you committing suicide, or somebody pushing somebody else into the river, and that person dying. In which way is the river responsible? So I think you are getting the point. This water from the rain clouds, the rain from the clouds, can be compared to the power that God gives us to do. It's indispensable for the seed to grow. Same way, the electricity that comes to your house for your benefit, that can be compared to God's power. It's there for your benefit. The water in the rivers that flows, that water is there for our benefit. And if we misuse it, that is entirely our fault. So God gives you the power to do. How we are going to utilize that power depends entirely on us. For instance, a policeman. He is given a license for a revolver. And what is a revolver for? For maintaining law and order. And if there is any kind of, um, you could say some people playing mischief or whatever and it has been ordered that this is a curfew time. So if anybody misbehaves, you have to use that revolver. Okay, that's what the revolver is for. Agar is revolver se, wo apne aap ko maar deta hai. To, to fir agar wo kahe ki license kyo di gai hamko. Arre revolver ki license aapko di gai thi ki kanun rahe for maintaining law and order. It was not given to you to kill yourself. You are at fault. In the same way, God gives us the power to do. Chetanas, Chetananam. Shri Dashmata Upanishad, Mantra 613 says. He gives us the consciousness, the power, the life. That comes from Him. There is a very uh, beautiful mantra. Several mantras I would say in the Keno Upanishad. Mantra number 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. In continuity is telling us that the instruments that we use <coughs> for performing any actions. What instruments do you need? Eyes, ears, nose, mouth, the mind, the intellect. All these, the senses, mind and intellect are the instruments we use to perform actions. All these instruments are without consciousness. They don't have life. So it is with his power that a person is able to see. The tongue is given double function. You know that, na? We can taste the tongue and we can also speak. The speaking is something very, very powerful. Word power. We have to be very cautious because words can make and words can break. That's how powerful they are. They can destroy as well. So he is given a double function to the tongue. But it is with his power that the tongue is able to taste or speak. The same thing has been repeated for each sense organs, the mind and intellect. The mind cannot do anything without his power. It is 
with his power that the mind thinks. It is with his power that the intellect is given the power to decide. Now, what we are going to see, what we are going to hear, what we are going to speak or taste or think or decide depends entirely upon ourselves. Aapko aankh me liye dekhne ke liye, right? Sab ke ghar mein TV hai. Toh, koi kaun sa program dekhe ga, ye aapke upar hai. There are programs, everybody's favorite is of course the serials. Uske upar sab lattu rathe hai. Even if they have to go out somewhere and make sure they're recorded. I must not miss that. They are hooked on them completely. And what is a serial? Nothing but your life. Har ek ki life ek serial hai. Vahi se le le ke tu dikhate hai aur kya parte hai. Lekin haan usi mein hi jute rahte hai. Kuch loog serial dekhte hai. Some people watch films of violence. Some people like to see nature. And some people like to get some spiritual thoughts. See, you are free to see that box is right there in front of you. The remote control is in your hand. This is what. Now, some people don't want to see the news. In the past, people don't want to see the news. There was some kind of prayer they would perform. Or a kind of chanting they would do. But today, a cup of tea, bed tea and the newspaper. That's the Bible, that's the Gita for most people. So what you are going to do with your eyes, and what you're going to see depends on you. What you're going to hear? Are you going to sit and hear idle gossip? That's very, very, you could say, interesting. Not many people will come and for a talk like this. I must say, I'm grateful to all of you all who have come. Because uh, given a choice, I do gossip and criticism of people. That's what we enjoy. Oh, so his daughter ran away. When did that happen? Was it a Muslim boy? Or was it somebody else? I know the person. This is the second time she's run. It's so interesting. So what you're going to hear? Are you going to hear all this gossip? Or are you going to have some idle waste of time talk about curtains, carpets, and whatever X, Y, Z and the sale down the road or rising prices and what you're going to do about it. You're going to listen to all that. Or you're going to listen to a spiritual talk. You have the ears. The choice is yours. In the same way, with this time, aap sattvik bhojan karenge, aap rajaguni bhojan karenge, aap tamoguni karenge. Bhagwan ne to zaban di hai. How? Pet bharo. लेकिन कहाँ से पेट भर रहे हो आप? That depends upon you. He's not responsible. I can't do without my chicken every day. So who is making you eat? God. Yes, it's very easy to blame him. He's made this creation, and that's what we are here for. So if you want to defend and justify yourself, there's many things you can do. So what we are going to taste, what we are going to think, we are free. Lots of people spend most of their lives brooding over the past. Usne aisa ka, usne aisa kiya, humare saath aisa bura hua. Har vyakti ko yehi sota hai. Lagta hai that I had a bad bargain in life. I tried to do good to people, they did bad to me, right? So we brood over the past. All we worry about the future. Agar aisa hua, to kya hoga? Aur yeh ho gya, to kya hoga? We worry about the past. So that's the thinking most people do. But the mind has been given to you. What you're going to think, that you are free to do. What you are going to decide about your life. What am I going to do with my life? What is my aim? My decision that you are entirely free. You are responsible for. So I suppose you have got the point now. Why do scriptures say that God without his will, uh, even a leaf cannot move? A leaf is an insignificant little thing, but it cannot move because life comes from him. The consciousness, the power to do comes
comes from him. But we have a freedom. Swatantra Kriyamane Vari Krito Bhagavata Ida. We have a freedom to perform action. And what we are going to do, you know? You want to know what kind of actions we are going to perform? What determines them? Our past life impressions. So, Sanskar Kathya, we are all born with a fund of experience. And you can probably, if you are a thinker, if you are perceptive, you will find this in your own family. A ghar mein teen bachi agar hai. लेकिन तीनों का स्वभाव अलग अलग है क्यों माँ बाप तो एक ही है ना तो ऐसा क्यों हुआ कि तीनों अलग अलग हैं क्योंकि each person each soul is born with a fund of experience that comes from the past so we have a base the sanskar and then we also have our own desires thirdly the kind of company we keep association is very important agar koi vyakti uske sare sangi saathi sharabi hai to ek to wo bhi peene lagega us sang aisa hai na so association is very important and also our knowledge so these few factors are going to determine the kind of actions a person performs However, as I said, God in nowhere, no way interferes with our human freedom. We cannot blame him anymore once you have learned what I have said today. The great saint Ramrisha Paramhans, he used to give an example to his disciples to teach them this uh, whole concept that I've told you right now. He told them the story of a gardener who was very fond of uh, his own garden and he had taken a lot of trouble. So much hard work he had put into beautiful trees, plants over there and he prided himself. He would never let any children into his garden because he knew, he knew that children can be pretty destructive. They'll pull out the flowers and the leaves and he would make sure the gate of his garden was always closed. Now one day what happened was a cow entered his garden. A guy inside, who forgot the door was closed, he was somewhere else. So the cow came and ate his favorite food. The cow was so happy that he was happy. All this greenery and nobody there and enjoying a meal. The moment this gardener came and saw that cow, he was so furious. He just picked up a stick which was lying nearby and he hit the cow. Hit the cow just once, huh? but it was time for that cow to die, whatever it may have been. The cow just fell down dead over there. Gardener was shocked. I killed this cow. What's going to happen now? You no know, cow is a sacred animal for Hindus. I thought, what do I do? If the villagers see this, they are going to beat me up. And what am I going to say? How did the cow die in my garden? So he thought and thought the first thing he did, he tied that cow and managed to drag it to another part of his garden, lest anybody should see it now. And he kept thinking, what will I say, what will I say, then it struck him. I have heard somewhere that uh, Indra, the king of uh, the celestial abode, he governs the hands. The hands are empowered to do by uh, King Indra and he makes the hands do. So if anybody is going to ask me who killed this cow, I know what I am going to say. Now enter the celestial god read his thoughts and he said, I'm going to teach this man a lesson. He came down in the disguise of an old man, knocked at the gate and he said, I have been looking at your garden from outside. It's wonderful. Can I come inside? I'd love to see what you have. It's beautiful. Tell me, did you do all this yourself? I mean, I can't imagine one person and such a big beautiful 
forgotten. Yes, yes, yes. Every plant, I have done it with my own hands. So this garden is entirely my own creation. My hands have worked hard. I've planted them. I have looked after them. Yes, I've never seen such a beautiful garden in my life ever. And then deliberately Indra made his way to the place where he saw the dead cow. Ram, 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 Ram. <gasps> dead cow, what's it doing in your garden? Who killed this cow? Seems to me that the cow has just died recently. What happened? Who killed it? You know, I just want to tell you, I thought you would, as a old man, would have this knowledge. Uh, don't you know that King Indra, the celestial god, is the governor of the hen? So, you know what happened? That uh, this hen, Indra made my hand pick up a stick and because the cow was in my garden, Indra made my hand take up the stick and hit the cow. So, and if you ever meet the celestial god Indra, you can ask him why he made me do it. It was not me. What's he? When it comes to the garden, it was your hands that have planted every one of these plants and these beautiful trees. And when it comes to killing that cow, it was Indra, isn't it? I am King Indra. So there you go. I said we are opportunists. Whenever we want to escape from any blame, or whenever we want to make excuses for spiritual practice. I hear that so often, so often, whenever I try to inspire people, teach people, literally entreat them, because in this particular age, people have got time for everything, excepting what their human life is meant for. So the reply I get, Bhagavan ki kripa ho ki to, zarur, zarur. अगर भगवान की कृपा से सब कुछ होना है तो आराम से घर में बैठिए ना घर में पैसा भी आ जाएगा अगर आप बीमार हैं घर में बैठिए अपने आप भगवान की कृपा से आप ठीक हो जाएंगे उसके लिए तो भागते दौड़ते हैं आज शादी में जाना है वहां कहा जाना है कोई भाग रहा है लिवरपूल भाग रहा है कोई ग्लासगो भाग रहा है कोई अमेरिका भी भाग रहा है कोई इंडिया भी भाग रहा है तब आपने नहीं सोचा भगवान की कृपा होगी तो तब तो भागते रहते हैं आज जब साधना करने की बात आई कोई अच्छा काम करने की बात आई और व्हाट वी डोंट वांट टू हैव यू नो टू बी ब्लेम्ड अबाउट दैट इट्स मी इट्स गॉड एंड ऑल द गुड दैट यू डू इट्स ऑल माय हार्ड वर्क ये मेरे खून पसीने की कमाई आपने की सो गॉड हैज लकली एस्केप्ड being blamed at least by a few people sitting here you have understood what it is and I hope we can make other people understand so he's not going to be blamed for anything in our life anymore then who are we going to blame because it is human nature that we always want to justify ourselves make excuses and find somebody to blame it starts right from the point we were children you know, when a little child slips and falls on the floor, what does the mother do? Just to pacify the child that's crying. She breathes the floor. This is the fault of the floor. <laughs> and the child feels a shock and says, My mother has done a bit. She has beaten the thing that has been responsible for me falling. So from that time, we get into this habit of blaming. As I said, we blame God when we want to, but today we know. Then what are we going to blame? We are going to blame the time or stars or our destiny. Destiny. Avasya meva bhokta vyam kritam karma shuva shudam nabuktam chiyate karma kalpa koti shatayati. You cannot escape from your destiny. You have to go through it. Whatever is written, Lila, on your forehead, 
the lawyer and wherever it is written, it's written. So whatever is written, predestined, nobody can change that. Forget the astrologers and the fortune tellers that people run to. TV baby program out there. Just forget them. They cannot do anything. Even the celestial gods cannot do anything. It is saying over here. You have heard, some of you must have seen the Mahabharata. Long ago, ago they were showing it on the BBC channel as well in England. And in that, Abhimanyu, Abhimanyu was Arjuna's son. He died in the battle of Mahabharata at a young age of probably 20. <coughs> Arjuna is a great saint. And the one who performed the marriage rites of Abhimanyu is a dissension of God, Vela Vyas, who Abhimanyu's uncle was. Lord Krishna himself, three topmost personalities, and they could not save, they did not save Abhimanyu. And why did they let him die in the first place? They were right there. This is destiny. So we cannot do anything about that. We cannot escape. Here we are again. Even the gods cannot do anything. No amount of Trayambakam Vedama Esugandan Pushtivardhanamma is going to change the time of death of any person. Death is sheer. So we are trapped again. Are we free to perform action or are we bound by destiny? Right now I'm going to tell you you are free to do. I want you to come back. This is not destiny. You are free to come back and listen to the answer. Not today. I'll give you the answer tomorrow. And tomorrow the talk, as you know, is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So I hope to see all of you are here. And if you have your friends and family members, this is an important knowledge. This is the most important knowledge, more important than all the university knowledge we have collected in our lives. Let me tell you that. And once you have it, you will know that it's going to help you to tackle all the stress and storms of your life. So, we will see each other tomorrow. <laughs> You know, when we talk about God, um, my belief for myself personally, I feel we're all God. And um, God is within us. And my own thinking again is that um, whatever we do in life is, and real contentment in life is within ourselves. And so to me, you know, we are God. And whatever we do, like you said, whatever, you know, any actions we take, we should be responsible for. Um, so when people say God is there, God is there, God is there, then it's like electric. We use electric, but we cannot see electric. We breathe in oxygen. We can't see oxygen. Same as gas. So I feel that God is within ourselves. You are absolutely right that God resides within each and every one. But we are not God. We are parts of God. Every religion tells you that. Parts of God. Yes, we are divine entities because God is divine and we are parts of Him. We are divine. But we are divine entities that are at present in a state of ignorance and with the right knowledge or right karma whatever is to be done when we are able to do then when this ignorance is dispelled then we become one with God at present there is no doubt about the fact that we are ruled by ignorance this theory of Advaita Vedanta that you are talking about Aham Brahmasmi. I am Brahma. This was the philosophy propagated by Jagadguru Shankaracharya 
about 2,500 years ago and the purpose of this was to get people out of the ritualistic practices that were prevalent at that time. So he propagated this philosophy of Advaita Vedanta because in the Dvaita Vedanta, the priests were taking a wrong knowledge from the scriptures and getting people into ritualism. And in order to rectify that situation, he propounded Advaita Vedanta. But very few people had the deep knowledge of his own life and the rest of his philosophy where he himself practiced devotion to Lord Krishna. He is the one who established the four uh, mats, you know, Badrinath and uh, Rameshwaram. So if he believed that he himself was God, he would not have established his mats. He advised his own mother to practice devotion to Krishna. So there is the soul and the super soul, two things. I am not the super soul, I am a part of the super soul in a state of ignorance. When this ignorance is dispelled, then you can say, Am Brahmasmi. Then, then you unite, you merge, the ignorance is not there. But at present, we are in a state of ignorance. The supreme being resides within the soul and the super soul. And that's why the Shvetashvatara Upanishad also says, Dvasuparna Sayuja Sakhaya. There are two within the super soul and the soul. And God cannot interfere. So why do we need to go to temple? Why do we need to worship God? Because He's not going to help you in any way. You are on your own. I'm going to, uh, this is what I'm going to discuss tomorrow. The goal of God in our lives after this. As far as freedom of action, He's given it to us. And He gives us the power to do. So after that, what is the role and how is he going to help us, help to free us? He doesn't interfere in action. What we are doing, we do. But how is he going to help us to get out of this karmic reaction? That is going to come tomorrow. Radhe uh, Radhe, I have a very simple question actually. You explain that we are ignorant. Yet we are the entity of the Divine God. The theory of karma is complicated, but there are do's and don't do's that you mentioned, 80,000? Mantras, yeah. Mantras. Uh, sorry, yeah. I have simple do's and yeah, don't. Yeah. If God was there to help us to understand that, I just wonder why he made it so complicated. <laughs> it appears to be complicated in today's day because um, our life is totally centered around the materialist aspect of our life. Materialism is rampant. So we have absolutely no clue of the inner self. We only live on external level. And when I explain to you what uh, we do to get out of this karmic cycle tomorrow, then you will know that it is a pretty simple thing. Because we have gone so, you could say, into a state of entrapment that we feel it's difficult, the present state of our mind. But if it comes to understanding what we are expected to do, ultimately, it's very simple. We are living in this world, right? A simple thing I'll tell you, we all want happiness. It's a universal goal. Now, what kind of happiness do you want? Do you want temporary happiness or do you want permanent happiness? Permanent, everlasting happiness? Do you want limited happiness or do you want unlimited happiness? We want unlimited happiness. What are we getting till today in our lives? Temporary, limited, 
That means nowhere in the world is the state of happiness that we want. Everything is temporary in the world. Everything is limited. And yet we go back there. Simple truth. And we've never made a decision till today that this is not where I'm going to find it. You keep going to the supermarket and that supermarket, you keep saying, I want diamonds. And they keep telling you, look, we don't sell diamonds. You have to go to the jewelry shop. And still invariably, you keep going back there. You keep going back there. Knowing that I'm going to get this. So it's we who are in a state of deep ignorance. But the truth is very simple. Truth is always very simple because we have believed in the untruth due to the kind of age we are living in, due to our past karmas, that it seems to be difficult. I've just given you a simple example. This is what the truth is telling you. You just do this, which I'm going to follow up tomorrow. It's very simple, but it's going to take us some time to do because the roots of our ignorance are pretty deep. And we have brainwashed ourselves into that untruth and we have believed it's truth. We believe this is knowledge. So you have to just rewind that, dehypnotize ourselves. And when we have an association with the true master, then we will find that this is a simple truth. All we have to do is follow it and we will get there. Jason um, I am a, a professional in marketing. My profession informs me that I should manipulate the senses, the taste, all the senses of the audience. Is my profession a target in terms of what it practices and what I need to do in order to uh, put bread on the table and so forth? The main point of karma is Always remember that is the attachment of the mind to it, our intention behind it. Whatever you do, what is your intention behind it? For instance, when we say lying is not a good thing, you shouldn't lie to anybody. But suppose a doctor lies to a patient who's had a heart attack and tells him that his tumor is non-malignant, when it actually is cancer, and he lies to the patient. What is the intention of the doctor? The doctor's intention is that this patient should recover from his heart attack, isn't it? Instead of suffering again. So if that is your profession, that's the work you're doing to earning your living. Yeah? You need to earn your living for food, clothes and shelter. Right? The intention is food, clothes and shelter and there is a little bit of extra laws to that. After food, clothes and shelter, the spiritual government expects every human being to share whatever they have extra in terms of material opulence with those who are less privileged. Like every year uh, religion tells you that a certain amount of money should go to a spiritual income tax. Spiritual income taxes, some religions say 5%, some 10%. This is a compulsory thing that each person has to do with charity. So if we are earning that particular money with the purpose of a livelihood and the rest is being utilized in the right direction, then we do not approve karma. But if our intention of working and making money is to have big house and big cars and the status, that is the intention. That's what's going to make me happy. And at the expense of deceiving another person, then we do a karma, karmic reaction on that. So the main thing is the intention of the mind. Two people commit a murder, say for instance, one person deliberately kills another person. And one person is defending himself one person strikes him and he strikes back because he has to defend himself. And in the procedure, the other person got killed. Both the cases went to court. And it was proved that somebody deliberately killed and the other, it happened in self-defense. So the person who killed deliberately will have to go through whatever 
the country law says he'll be hung on life imprisonment and the person who accidentally killed the person in self-defense, he will be let free, isn't it? So it's intention. Karmic uh, result that we get is the intention of the action. The action, the fruit we accrue will be the intention. And that's where we can one day free ourselves of this cycle, which I'll be talking about tomorrow.